Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil 2 Claire A. In the last part we left the RPD and entered the sewers where we had a pretty hefty plot dump about Billy Birkin. And now we're going to actually finish off the sewers and head into the final area. Yeah, like I said, the, the sewers are actually a very short area. They're very much like the caves from Resident Evil 1. Uh, they're more or less just a transition area for the final area. So I, I'm trying to think, what would be the game? this game's equivalent to the cabins? Uh, would it be the outside sections? Uh, no, it wouldn't be the outside sections. Hmm. I suppose it would be the basement? Or something like that? Maybe the sherry section? I don't know. Just gonna stand there, Claire? Okay, good. <laughs> Though, thankfully, this time around, the sewers aren't filled with spiders. Mostly. The second room still is. This time around, we got something... different. Also, how did you get ahead of me, Sherry? This time around... We got a lot of zombies. That don't do much, honestly. Oh, the vomit attack. I think that's actually the first time we've seen that this time around. It doesn't do much other than damage you, or maybe even stun you. I don't think it can poison you. And now we're back to the spiders, and I almost got poisoned. That would have been bad. Also, uh, I forgot to mention it when it happened. First off, clearance identification device of Wolf and Eagle are next on the device. Guess what we have to use the medals for? Yay! Uh, one thing I didn't really mention until... I noticed it again. Uh, this alternate costume has a headband on Claire. I forget about that all the time. Secret door behind the waterfall. The trope remains true. Though, I actually forget, since the water lowered there, is there an item you can get now in the previous room? I wouldn't be surprised, and what the hell was that? I don't think we ever figure out what that was. Unless I was just like the waterfall reactivating. Which would make sense, actually. A control panel for the sky shrine. Watch the power on? Yes, I will. And now we have access to this little sky tram thing, which will just take us over to the next area. Fairly self explanatory. So, before we head into that little thing, there's this little cannon here. Flare gun needs something to ignite it. If you brought the lighter along, it would show you where this item is. The weapon box key. Uh, if you have a lighter, you can see that thing light up, but I don't as Claire right now, so I won't be able to see it. It's there no matter what, though, so you can still grab it. Though you don't really need it as Claire, for reasons we'll see, I think, later this part, actually. Anyway, uh, let's get back to what's on topic here. Uh, this set of hallways actually I think has some of the highest zombie population in the air in the game because there are a lot here you don't need to deal with most of them especially in this room although I did miss something here uh, if you actually went left to that previous fork instead of right uh, you would have fought a few more zombies but you would eventually find a corpse lying down on the floor if you investigate it you would have gotten a weapon known as the spark shot very powerful short-range weapon but it's a special weapon and would have driven down my rank anyway, so I'm not using it. At least I think it would have driven down the ranking. I'm not sure. I never use it anyway. I also think it takes up two slots in the inventory, so not really good for that. Really, all I would have used it on is the upcoming boss fight, and then never again. So, not really worth it. Plus, I don't think there's a single ammo refill in the game for it. I think there was supposed to be at one point, but it never ended up in the finished product. So, eh. Though, don't worry. What's there for Leon, we will be getting. <laughs> and this is a really ominous save room because it doesn't have the music. Huh. I'm trying to think, does another, does another save room play that theme for the rest of the game? I don't think they do. Huh. I don't think so, anyway. Either way, handgun bolts there, which I'm just going to get so I can then go and store stuff. Uh, for what's coming up, I don't recommend having the handgun at all. Uh, bring out the bow gun if you have it. Or no, not even the bow gun. The bow gun's not really useful. Just bring out uh, grenade rounds and flame rounds and acid rounds. All three types, really. 
I'd recommend having acid rounds out the start, but don't use them all. Once you get low, switch over to flame rounds, I believe, is what I do. Though I have to admit, I actually really like this track too. Not as much as the normal save room theme, though, because this is very calm before the storm kind of feeling to it. You know what I mean? I like it. I like it a lot. Don't know why I suddenly turned into a Scottish man there at the end, but I did, and the train's true to my heritage. No, then again, I'm just a mutt of anything European, which is weird, but also really cool, because I have several ancestors, and yay. Also, bring along a healing item or two. <laughs> just call it a hunch. Though, you don't need too many as Claire. There's also a first aid spray in that little cabinet there if you need it. I don't, though, because I know how to handle myself well enough, I'd say. Also, if you've ever played Resident Evil Zero, this area looks kind of familiar, because this actually makes a cameo in that game. It's a very short and honestly really stupid cameo, but it's there. Either way, but, uh, that little panel there is actually how, you, how we activate this little train thing. But in order to activate it, we need to get a key, which is just, I'll tell you right now, it's in here. Along with some, I think, acid rounds? Or are they flame rounds? Flame rounds. Eh, more flame rounds is good. I have 30, so I should never run out until the final boss, but yeah. And a control panel key. Oh, I'm just not noticing that they actually rend uh, play the footsteps in stereo. Uh, their position in the audio depends on where you are on the screen. That's pretty decent detail, actually. Either right, way, let's play, play, put in that control. Well, first off, it seems to be a control for the tuning table. There's a, a, a keyhole. Just put it in. And now for stuff to happen. Let's go down. <laughs> Sounded familiar. Security panel. In case of an emergency, the red light will turn on and access from the outside will be prohibited for a limited time. Great. Now we're trapped out here. Fantastic. First off, love this boss theme. Secondly, time for Billy Birkin to show up again. Just pelt him with flame round. He'll go down after, I think, 10. Uh, you do want to be careful because he does hurt, but honestly, there are much worse boss fights. And he's down. Yeah, exactly 10. Wow, I'm good. He can hurt, but he's so slow, it, he shouldn't pose much of a threat. Plus, you have a pretty wide environment to avoid him in, too. So, not a very hard boss fight. Sherry. Uh,
Claire? Oh, you're finally awake. Isn't this... That's okay. You keep it. I'm sure it'll keep you safe. Thank you, Claire. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. I grew up alone, but now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. <laughs> Sherry. Rest here for a bit. I'll be right back. As soon as I found the antidote for you. If it's not obvious enough by the fact that Sherry has the top of Claire's original outfit from this point on, if you were playing in the original costume, you wouldn't have the top jacket. And that scene makes me feel a little bad for Sherry. I'm not a big fan of Sherry's character on the whole, but that's just... Shit, man. I mean, I was a pretty lonely kid as a child, but nothing like that. Either way, before we progress into the Umbrella Lab for the game, we do want to do some inventory management. I do bring... Uh, I'm just going alone with the acid rounds, but I could recommend bringing along the handgun because it could be pretty useful for what's coming up. Though, on the whole, there aren't many areas in this enemy... Areas in this enemies. Enemies in this area, though I actually, I just realized I did forget something. Oh, hello! <laughs> yeah, for some reason the zombies in this area don't spawn until after you leave this room. So I was, uh, I was kind of surprised there. But I did forget one thing, and I actually forget what it was. Uh, flame rounds! That's right. You probably actually could just go through it without the flame rounds, though, because you don't really need them. I I, th now, I just remember why I brought them. I only need them for one enemy type. But yeah, naked zombies. And I think in terms of HP, they're the strongest, because, you know, Umbrella's been experimenting on them the most. Though, yet again, I think in the Resident Evil remake, it's shown that naked zombies actually have no genitalia. Which is kind of odd, but <laughs> I'm not complaining. Either way, before we can progress anywhere in this area, we actually, if you investigate some stuff, learn that we need to turn on the power. And doing so is actually a very simple process. Just have to come in here and do something. First aid spray there, by the way. I never grab it. We need to grab this. Fuse case. And where do we use the fuse case? Right next to it, actually. A control box for used for super low temperature experiments. I'm, I'm, I could send the superductor confuse here if I had a fuse case, which I do. Waste of time, really, because that was just to get that main fuse. Yeah, I don't really get that overly long cutscene for it. Well, it's not over long. It's like, what, eight? Uh, like, 21 seconds by the looks? But, uh, it's not needed. You could have at least sped that up a bit. By the way, now that we've turned on power, we can access some stuff around here. Well, we haven't turned on power yet, my bad. We have the way to turn on the power. To turn on the power, we actually have to head back into the central room here. Which, by the way, this game's lab, not that big. I think the lab in Resident Evil 1 was actually a bit bigger. Think, keyword, usual, as. Now power's been turned on. You can tell because it's no longer red, but blue. And we actually, in terms of Claire, never really need to go back to that previous branch, aside from one thing later on. So I guess we do need to go back there, which means my explanation is moot. Either way, we do want to head over here and head into this door on the far end. I think this is actually the only door in this area you can enter without turning on the power. Ah, oh, that's a sound, but there's some documents in here. Also, if you check this, you can get the, uh, bowgun bolts, which is useful. 36 of them, too. Laboratory security manual. 
Laboratory security met all security measures in case of an emergency. In the instance of an uncontainable biohazardous breakout, all security measures will be directed toward the underground transfer facility. In the instance that any abnormalities are detected among among cargo and transit, all materials will be automatically be transported from the loading zone to the designated high-speed train, in which case all materials will be isolated and disposed of immediately. In the instance of a Class 1 emergency, the entire train will be purged and disposed without, of without any delay. In the instance that the lab itself becomes contaminated, the northernmost route currently used to transfer materials from this facility will be used as the emergency escape route. This route will secure passage between the relay points outside the city. Disclosure about any information regarding research conducted here the existence of this facility is strictly prohibited. This is top priority to keep all research classified. Escape access may be denied under certain extenuating circumstances. Well then, that's actually a lot of sense making. User registration. Temporary user registration for culture experiment room. Username, guest, password, none. Valid for 24 hours. That is another zapping mechanic. And by the way, if you have the lighter, you can actually burn those vines. I don't, and I don't care to. Now, there's also, at that computer that that first note was on, you can actually activate a bit of a mist there. The mist, uh, I forget exactly how it works. I think it's, uh, lowers the power and HP of certain enemies and only those types of enemies. However, if you use it in one scenario, in the next scenario, they'll be more powerful. It's usually these guys right here. Who, by the way, are very weak to flame rounds. If you use the mist, these guys are less powerful. However, the B scenario, they'll be more powerful. And because of that, I usually save that mist for the second scenario. I think it might only apply to them. Don't quote me on that, though, because honestly, some things in the Resident Evil games are kind of vague like that. By the way, those tentacles totally don't stand out from the CG ba from the pre-rendered background. Well, technically, it is a CG background, just pre-rendered computer-generated stuff. <laughs> I have to wonder what the uh, process was for making the backgrounds, though. Like, were they all 3D rooms that they just took 2D pictures of, 2D images of, or what? I actually really like to learn that. Because art stuff like that's always entertained me. And if you listen carefully, you can hear that there are liquors in this room, so get out the acid rounds. Though, they're not like other liquors. These are super liquors. More HP and more powerful. However, they still kind of suck in the long run. Uh, like the normal liquors, they have a decapitation attack with their jump that, if you're at too low of an HP count, will kill you. I think I'm actually at that threshold right now. Just the fact that I know how to avoid getting hit by these guys. Usually. I kind of suck at aiming, honestly. But thankfully, this part of the game also has plenty of green herbs, all things considered. So you shouldn't really die too much. Mind you, I, it would suck for me if I died, because that would put me way back at the beginning of the game, because I haven't saved. Uh, usually in Resident Evil 2, I save at one specific point in the A scenario, and that is actually when I get to the sewers. Uh, for Claire at least. For Leon, it's a different room. But for Claire, it's that. And welcome to the last major save room in the A scenario, actually. And by the way, this area does actually have a map. It's right here. That took me forever to find, because that's really stupidly hidden. And now let's do some inventory management. Uh, put that green herb in there. There is a red herb coming up, but... Uh, which is actually why I'm keeping the green herb. That's why I put the mixed herb in there. My bad. And really all you need for this upcoming part is the bow gun, the bolts, the weapon, the weapon box key, and the herb. But with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. <clears throat> And after clearing my throat, and in part 7, we're finishing off Claire A, actually. See you guys then.